Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending the conference today. Our first session is by Andrea Greenhouse. She is a Chief Internal Communications Strategist at Vision, Vision to Voice Communications, Inc. And she'll be presenting on the topic, Building the Employee Brand from the Inside. Vision to Voice Communications is a boutique internal communications agency, and Andrea's team works with organizations to create a great employee experience and build an authentic brand from the inside. Andrea is, a considerate, or is considered an international thought leader in her field and leads a team that works with, with clients across North America. Her passion for internal communication and culture began over 25 years ago when she saw firsthand how it could make a difference in an organization's success. Since then, she has combined strategic thinking and fresh ideas to help organizations build a better employee experience. Good luck on your presentation, Andrea, and I'll just come back near the end, okay? Great. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. And thanks to Mark and his team for inviting me to speak today. It's a real pleasure to be here. And I am going to, um, I was having some technical problems with my slides, so I'm just going to go into the mode where I can um, share a little bit easier. There we go. Actually, no. There we go. All right, as Sandra said, I'm the um, Chief Communication Strategist at Vision to Voice. I actually founded and own the company as well. And today I wanna to talk to you about branding your, building your employer brand from the inside. So one of the things our organization does is we focus on helping organizations build a meaningful employee experience. And I believe that that is the foundation for building an authentic, brand as an employer. We heard Mark talk about the stats and all of the challenges that, it, that recruiters have today. I'm part of the auto, I'm, I, we live in, I live in Ottawa, but we have clients across Canada, but I know the recruiters in Ottawa are really asking, how do I get the right person for the right job? And how do I keep that person and give them meaningful work and help them thrive? The answer to that question is to build an authentic employer brand, because I think that helps you attract the right person to your organization. And I'm a little biased, but I think the only way to build an authentic brand as an employer is from the inside. Let's step back for a minute and talk about what an employer brand really is. In my view, it answers the question of what it's really like to work for your company. And it starts and ends with your employees. It's a story that separates your brand from competitors and inspires people to spread the word about how great it is to work for your organization. And it's not just an intellectual connection, it's also an emotional connection. So it comes from the heart. When I think of a brand as, you know, I was thinking about what example am I gonna use today? Am I gonna bring a ketchup bottle or whatever? But the, the, the brand that I like to talk about it's not necessarily because I'm a fan, but they just do such a great job about, of branding, is Starbucks. When you go to a Starbucks, as you open the door, you can smell the coffee. You go in, there's a certain lighting, there's um, a display of great looking snacks, you've got someone greeting you, there's an array of drinks, and there's music pumping through the, the coffee shop. That is the Starbucks promise. How, what it's going to be like to have a coffee in a Starbucks shop. You need to think when building an employer brand, you need to think of what is that promise that I am um, giving to my potential employee. And I 
can tell you what it's not. So an employer brand is not something that the marketing department dreams up. I know organizations that hire an advertising agency to help them develop their brand as an employer. I tell you that's not how to do it. What you end up with was a, is a fancy career on your web page that looks like everybody else's. And fun photos on Instagram that also look like everybody else's. And a polished job description along with the latest jargon that makes it look like it's really cool to work in your workplace. And even posters on the wall or at a career fair of what it's like. So the only way to really build an authentic and true brand as an employer is to build it from the inside because it's the experience of employees that's a true reflection of your brand promise. If you are a construction uh, organization or a high tech company, you want each of those companies wants to attract different people. A construction company wants people focused on safety, quality, and cost. Whereas a high tech company wants people who are, who, um, are innovative, who can, man, uh, can navigate change very quickly and, are, and thrive on change. They're different people. So why would you have the same brand? What we do with companies who really want to build an authentic brand is we have a five-step roadmap. We call them the five not so easy, but absolutely worth it steps. They include research and understanding, recognizing and identifying, building a strategy and plan, and then implementing that, and then finally activating and unleashing your brand as an employer. This is not a five week plan. This is more like a three year process. And I'll explain each step and why it takes so long. The first thing to do is to research and understand what's unique about your culture, your brand and your company strategy. Like that construction company I talked about, to win in its marketplace, it needs specific people with specific behaviors and mindsets that help them deliver on their strategy. Same goes with the high-tech company. You wanna understand employees, both past, present and future employees, what their employee experience is, was, and could be. And then you wanna understand what's the perception out there? Is it accurate or not? And what's your reputation? We're doing this with a company right now. We're sending out a survey in a couple days. How do you perceive this organization? Is it accurate? The next step is to take all that data, take that metrics and get a picture. Recognize and identify so you can articulate your brand promise and find alignment and gaps. What is true and what needs work and what are the perceptions versus reality. Then you need to test again, ask questions, keep asking questions and identify the brand qualities that make you unique and different. A construction company idea versus the high tech company and within your industry, what are the difference? What's different about your construction company that's different from someone else's? Those are all really critical to understand. Next, come, now it's becoming increasingly difficult. <laughs> you have to develop a strategy and a plan. If your company's employee experience is not what you, where you want it to be, if it's not healthy, then you need to work on that first. The worst thing in the world for a new employee is to walk through the door and the job and the organization is not as advertised. I'm sure you know, but the stats say people leave their jobs quick in the first few years that 
turnover rate is high and part of it is because the job was not as advertised and neither was the organization. Then you need to develop a strategy to build that internal brand. And I'm gonna tell you about a case study in a few minutes, uh, how we did this. And then you put, need to put together a realistic timeline and plan to make that happen. Then you have to activate or you have to implement that plan. And this is where the work happens to close the gaps. Communication and change are vital to this process. And you need to focus on your employee experience and culture, but also, you know, have you connected your employees to the purpose of the organization, to the values and the personality that makes you different? Do you offer opportunities to learn and grow? Do, are there specific ways that teams work together? And do you focus on employee well-being, which is hugely important right now and going forward? When the hard work is done, then comes the fun part, and that is to activate and unleash your brand. This is where you can update your recruiting tools with accurate, real, authentic, true um, information about what it's really like to work for your organization, what makes you unique. And then you can harness your employee voices to amplify your brand because what's happening inside needs to be understood outside. And when good things are happening inside, then great things will happen outside as well. And there are so many ways to do this. Um, and again, it requires um, a strategy to help you amplify those employee voices. But if you do it really well, you don't even need to tell your employees to talk about how great it is to work um, for your organization. They'll do it themselves. Now we did this for one of Canada's top universities, I would say top five. Um, and what we did was we were hired uh, to look at internal communication and the employee experience. And what we found was that the inside didn't reflect the outside. And we did all that research, we did all the studying, we understood what the gaps were. And then we looked at employee communication as a key element of the employee experience and whether or not that reflected the brand. And I'll tell you kind of an aha moment that I had was when we were in a focus group and a young woman said, you know, I walk around campus and I see these banners that say belong or belonging. And I don't feel that way. So there was you know, specific elements of the strategies, how to build that feeling of belonging in that organization so that when that woman walked by the banner, she felt like it was an authentic representation of what that brand story was. And that's it for me. Uh, again, my name is Andrea. I share a lot of information on LinkedIn. I write a monthly blog about the employee experience. Uh, cover things like change management, the future of work. We're doing a lot of work in the area of, of helping organizations navigate that future in terms of remote work and hybrid work, employee wellness. And I'd be really thrilled if you followed me, subscribed to our blog, or connected with me. Um, now I'm going to take some questions. Is there anyone with any questions? We've got five minutes. Everybody's rushing off to the networking portion, maybe. <laughs> oh, there's Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Um, I was just going to ask you, um, do you mind um, putting in your email and um, perhaps your LinkedIn or social media, if you like, into the chat, just so people are able to copy it down if they'd like a little easier. Absolutely, that's a great idea. There's my email and then on our website, um, oops, um,
We've got, we write a, a blog and we produce a newsletter with lots of um, tips and insight. It was rated one of the top 20 um, blogs um, in across the world actually for information about the employee experience. So I would uh, love to have some more subscribers. Um, and also- And it's, it's just through your website? Yeah, um, they go to our okay. website on the, uh, I think it's the left-hand corner at the bottom. There's a subscribe button. It turns orange when you go over it. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so uh, I actually, oh, sorry, go on. Well, yeah. Oh, I well, I actually had a question just about um, your first step, actually, in your five step um, system there. Um, so are you able to maybe go into more detail about how um, an employer is able to find out um, what their employees think about the em employee experience and um, the reputation of the company as well? How would a, how would an employer go about doing that and finding that information? So the best way is to do a survey. A short okay. survey. A lot of organizations um, have think their employees have survey fatigue, but that's usually because it's not communicated properly and the results are never actioned. Um, so having a clear communication strategy around why you're surveying, having an easy survey, all you need is maybe four or five questions. Um, and then and then follow up with here are the results. And then usually a survey and a focus group or two go hand in hand. So you might get some results on the, on the survey and you need to understand it's data. You need to understand the, the stories behind the data. So you, for example, the, what I talked about, the, the woman who said the, the poster on the wall or the banner on campus didn't reflect how she felt. So that wouldn't have shown up in the data, but it's a powerful story about what was happening in the organization. So having focus groups, and focus groups are pretty easy. If, if you don't wanna do a survey, then have a focus group, have a bunch of focus groups. Um, for the project that we worked on the university, we had, we did a, a survey, we did interviews with senior leadership, and we did 12 focus groups of, uh, employees in various parts of the organization. There was 4,000 employees. Um, and that's typically what we do. And that can start to really get some insight into what the employee experience, what they love, what they don't love. Um, those kinds of things are, are pretty important. And then externally too, potential employees, people who didn't accept your job, ask them, you know, you send out a job offer, somebody goes with another company, what was it? And some of those, all those data points are really powerful for helping you understand what your employee brand should really be. Mm -hmm. And so do you have any maybe examples of, of the type of questions maybe can, people can ask when they're um, putting out that survey? Uh, let me see, I'm trying to think. So <clears throat> yes, in, well, I'm, Right off the top of my head, um, I can think of some some focus group questions where we specifically asked, your brand values are X, Y, and Z. Do you feel that um, your employee experience reflects those values? Yes or no? If no, why not? If yes, why? Right, so that starts to help you understand. Do people really feel that that their um, uh, that what's going on in the organization is a true reflection of what what management really wants to uh, to see in terms of culture? And I should say, you know, culture is kind of the mindset and behaviors that you know. I talked a lot about culture. In mm -hmm. in my view. Culture is the mindset and behaviors you want to build to deliver on your company's mandate or strategy and to succeed as an organization. Whereas the employee experience is how the employees themselves uh, experience sort of day-to-day -day life. And it starts from the hiring process, onboarding, sort of the way they work with teams, the way they're supported individuals, how they learn and grow, how their well-being is looked after. There's a whole list of categories around the employee experience um, that helps shape what that experience is and how people would define it.
I feel supported. I feel challenged. I feel comfortable. Like there's all kinds of different uh, words that you would, could use to describe different experiences for different, you know, uh, okay. situations. And then just the other question that I had um, in regards to the five-step process, do you find that um, when organizations are um, changing up the way they do things to improve that employee experience and the, um, the, the reputation of the organization, is it a lot of the time, do you find that it's like their social media or the digital aspect of the organization is not quite there and that sort of affects the reputation or the experience? And it's, it, do you find that, that that's the case in a lot of situations? Well, to be honest, like, you know, I've probably worked with a handful, under 10 organizations, so I can't generalize. Mm -hmm. But one organization I did work with, um, a lot of their social media and even their communication inside the organization only only covered part of what it's like to work there. And it was really heavily focused on uh, charitable and fun, charitable events and fun activities and the social aspect of work. Uh, whereas what people really wanted to know was more about the work itself and more about the work that the company was doing, the projects it was working on, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So by focusing on the, the you know, the, the golf tournament and you know we're not doing too much social stuff these days but by focusing on those things um you're missing a big part of what it's like to actually work in the organization because work is is being done mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of organizations sort of shy away from that mm -hmm. um, i have one client down in the us and they they're a construction company and they spend a lot of time talking about the work and the projects that they're they're doing. And that their Instagram feed is for potential employers or employees, but they're highlighting the cool projects that the company is working on, not okay. just the golf tournament, mm -hmm. right? And that's important. Is there anything else that you wanted to add in regards to this topic at all today? Oh, well, I could talk for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot. But, uh, and every, you know what, every organization is different and unique. And I think that's what, they don't look at what other people are doing, mm -hmm. look in inside. Forget about what other people are doing and look inside your organization and find those stories and find what's different and find what's special because every organization has a unique personality. And finding that and giving it voice are really what's, what's key in differentiating yourself in, in a competitive marketplace. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your presentation today. Um, we have a couple of minutes left. So if, um, if uh, people want to head over to the networking portion of the event, um, it's just on the side there, and then you can connect with others at the event. Um, and our next set of sessions will be starting at three o'clock, and then we do have a panel at 3.30. That's great. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye.